once the shear box is in place you can see that it's freely able to slide between this region and that this extension over here is in contact with the dial gauge needle and the box is in contact with the piston on the side which was connected to the proving ring now what we do here is we manually just uh, move the motor and the piston forward a bit the hydraulic jack then we fix this uh, screw inside now this is locked the rest we will rotate with the lever until this is in contact with this extension over here so first we unlock the lever as you can see now it is unlocked and this can freely move as it moves this piston starts to move forward so we will keep rotating it until both as you can see the deflection dial gauge has started to move this means that this is now in contact with this and as the uh, jack pushes the box forward there is uh, this upper section is now pushing against the needle but we can't start the experiment until we see movement in the load uh, deflect uh, load dial gauge so now as you can see as i rotate this the load dial gauge is starting to move this means that this entire box is pressed against this piston now and that whenever this jack moves forward it is now applying load di directly onto the dial gauge and the proving ring and the dial gauge so now what we have to do is that we will close the mechanism for the lever and then placing this ball bearing on top of the uh, loading cap we will place the load hanger on top of the ball bearing now the weight of the hanger itself is 8 pounds and 15 ounces or 8.375 uh, eight point nine three seven five uh, pounds yes eight point nine three seven five pounds then there are several plates over here of ten pounds each we will place one plate on the loading hanger and then once everything is in place we will unclamp the clamping screws that hold the upper and lower section together because now we want for whatever force to be applied to be applied on the soil within it is important that for each experiment you always remove the, these screws first because otherwise the soil will not be acted on by any pressure from the machine it will be these screws that will be resisting that pressure and this can damage the machine okay secondly we will also tighten the separator screws just a bit to separate the upper and uh, lower section of the shear box to ensure that there's a slight gap between them so that they do not contribute to any friction then before we start we will set the dial gauge to zero as well as the load dial gauge then we will turn on the machine and then for intervals of 10 on the deflection dial gauge we will note the corresponding uh, value on the load dial gauge 
So at 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, we will note down the corresponding load values, and we will keep on doing this until uh, either the uh, value becomes constant on the load dial gauge for three respective readings, or until the load gauge starts moving backwards, or unless the dial gauge, reflection dial gauge reaches 15% strain. Now 15% strain means that considering that this area is six centimeters by six centimeters, 15% <coughs> of uh, six centimeters or 60 millimeters is nine millimeters. So once this shear box has been pushed nine millimeters forward, if the, experiment, if the load value is still increasing, we will end the experiment there and consider that value at the 15th uh, percent to be our final value. However, that is uh, unlikely to happen in the case of simple sand. So what we do is, uh, what will most likely happen is either the load value will become constant to a certain point or it will start moving backwards, meaning shear failure has occurred. Okay, now I will begin. As you can see, first I was manually rotating it fast, but now it is moving at a rate of 1.25 millimeters per minute. And this uh, dial gauge is moving, and correspondingly, the load dial gauge is moving. So at 20, it was 10. At 30, it's 12. At 40, it's 13. At 50, it's 14. At 60, it's 15. At 70, it's 16.5. At 80, it's still it's 17 now. At 90, it's still 17. Yeah, sorry, 16. Now at 100, it's 16.5. At 110, it's 17. At 120, it's still 17. At 130, it's still 17. It's not moving beyond 17. And at this. For several trials now, for several iterations, 120, 130, and 140, it's still stuck on 17. So we will stop the test over here. Now, removing this screw, we can quickly loosen up the jack. We remove the loading hanger and then we can take out the shear box and reset it with a different sample or with the same sample considering it's dry soil. Now I currently just performed one trial using 10 pounds. However, the same procedure has to be repeated for 20 pounds and 30 pounds including the weight of the loading hanger. Currently, 18.9375 pounds are, were acting on it for this experiment. However, we also have to do 28.9375 and 38.9375. The rest of the procedure is the same, just the number of plates will be increased. And that's all there is to the performance of direct shear test. The rest you will do in your calculations.